This episode is brought to you by Benjamin Moore. What's up, Flipsters? I got a confession to make. I got mad regrets, y'all. Have you ever done something that you knew you shouldn't have done and you did it anyway? Yeah, we shouldn't have bought this house. It just sucked up all our time, all our money. But it looks good. It does look good. Stick around to the end of the video because the before and after is amazing. And you're gonna wanna find out, do we make money? Do we lose money? You gotta stick around to find out. <laughs> Hey Flipsters, I'm Lauren. And I'm Lincoln, and we are happily married. But not to each other. We're old friends from college, and we're flipping houses in the Austin, Texas area. And we're taking you along for the ride. All right, so this is a 2,000 square foot, four bed, three bath house built in 1958. It's got a converted garage in that square footage. Oh gosh. And you know I love those. We're coming in a little late to the game on this one. Somebody's <laughs> already started the demo. Another investor had this, they were working on it, and I think they ran out of money. Yep, that happens in this industry. People get a little too ambitious, especially when they're starting out flipping, and they take on projects that are too big, too complex, and they don't budget for those unexpected things to crop up. And this house had a lot of unexpected stuff. You gotta be careful, because we don't know what type of work they've actually done, but uh, first impressions? <laughs> we still have our work cut out for us on this one, and the dangerous thing about buying a property like this is, yeah, whatever's been done, you can't get guarantee that it was done correctly so we basically have to start from scratch yeah and another drawback to this it's a little bit of a busy street yeah so I'm kind of nervous about that let's see how the inside looks okay wow it just hits you the magnitude of how much work this thing is going to need staring you right in the face yeah. look at this i'm a little nervous about this one you know well, this reminds me of the farmhouse mm -hmm. remember that where we had like it was down to the studs when we bought it you can tell right away this was closed off and they've put in a beam here but i'm not sure if this is structurally sound we're gonna have to have an engineer look at this that's the right concept to open up this wall but that's a little dicey. Moving to this area, this looks like they have positioned this to be the kitchen. I do like how the kitchen is connected to this extra space. I think this will be just a great open concept. Yeah, this is nice high ceilings and you got plenty of room to work with. And look, they've already chipped out for an island. We can run electrical or gas. I mean, that's half our workforce right there. And you've got great access to the exterior on two sides of this space. I don't know about these doors. No. Is this a window? Look at this. This is not a door, this is just a, a window to be made to look like a door. Yeah, obviously we're gonna need new insulation, oh all new HVAC, look at this mess up here. It's just completely demolished. I hope you got a deal on this one. Well, we did. <laughs> there may be a reason they yeah. abandoned this project. Yeah. Okay, so this looks like it was probably the garage. See the step down here? You yeah. can tell that the foundation's not at the same level and it looks like they converted it anyway. And that <laughs> is why I hate garage conversions. I hate add-ons that aren't at the same level. People, if you're gonna add on to your house, make sure the foundation is poured at the same level as your house. It's more expensive, but it looks so much better and that way you don't tell that it's an add-on. What do we do? Are we gonna level it up? I think we're gonna have to float it so that it looks at least consistent. I'm not totally sure what this room should be. You got plenty of space so a master would make sense, but we're gonna have to redo plumbing. This is all just a garbage heap. I mean, look, you've got a built-in air conditioning unit into the wall. Nobody wants that in their master suite. No, but I do think it'd be a selling feature to have like a property that could be an in-law suite, an Airbnb. This could be your new office or studio. Your new sanctuary. See, look at us turning lemons into lemonade. <laughs> That's what we do. Always look we on the market bride. the hell out of stuff. All right, let's go see those other bedrooms so we can see what we're working with. I'm worried about this flooring. I mean, it looks like somebody just gave up midway through the demo, like, yeah. ugh. Okay, so for this first bedroom, it's just right off your front door. Looks like uh, somebody already bagged up a bunch of insulation for us, so that's a start. Oh my goodness. This is a good size space, though. Let's see these other bedrooms. Coming down this hallway, it looks like you've got two bathrooms backing up to each other. So check this out. We've definitely got rotted out cast iron plumbing in this thing. That sounds expensive. That is really expensive. We're gonna have to jack out all of this old cast iron underneath the foundation and put new PVC plumbing. So this house was built in the 1950s. There's about a 50 year shelf life on cast iron plumbing. So unfortunately, this is a super common problem for these old houses and it's an expense. You just gotta factor in, you gotta rip that out. There's a lot of big ticket items when you're working with an older Home. Okay, I'm questioning the buy of this one. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is <laughs> a, a lot big of work. Undertaking. 
So moving on down the hall here, we've got a nice secondary bedroom over here. Okay, so what I like about this bedroom is you have access to the exterior with the store right here. Yeah, you actually had a little bit too much access. <laughs> this was just a gaping hole in the house. Just wide open to the outside. Yeah, we went ahead and took care of that so we didn't have some unwanted tenants living in our house, but yes. it is backyard access. Yeah, there you go. It's also attic access. It's also living room access. You can get to the whole house from just this Master room. Master bedroom access. Boom. Speaking of, you want to just take the wall yeah, through to the master bedroom. Take the shortcut <laughs> through the closet. <laughs> okay, welcome. To the primary bedroom. I think this is great. You've got your ensuite bath. And you've got a nice size walk-in closet. It looks like they reframed this. I don't know if this was all one big bathroom or if this was originally a closet. Well, you do have a closet over there, so I'm guessing maybe they added it after the fact. This is gonna be pretty tight. How would you feel if we closed this off and made this all the master bath? Cause like you say, you still got a closet. Right, I think that would feel better and more spacious. Cause look, that is not a big area at all. No. I'm almost scared to see what's in the backyard of this thing. <laughs> Actually, it's a pretty good sized yard. You got this weird patio thing off your kitchen. Yeah, why is it so enclosed? <laughs> sort of weird. Okay, I think we're gonna have to knock these walls down. Uh, looks like they did a privacy fence for us. My guess is that the neighbors did that because they didn't want to be looking at this hot Probably mess. Probably so. I wish they would have done our uh, roof. Yeah, I wish they would have just bought this house. I'm starting to rethink our purchase here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you forget to factor in the brain damage and the time factor. We could have done three other projects in the time that it took to do this one and with a lot less stress. We should have swiped left. I mean, look at this whole hot mess of a backyard patio. It's so disjointed. You've got this weird enclosed patio area and then you've got just a slab. And look, your roof line is just completely this cut off. This is jacked, man. This is jacked. The up, exterior, dude. this may be one where the exterior is worse than the interior. Yeah, somehow. And I don't say that often. It's like almost easier that there's like a blank slate inside yeah, this versus is, this hodgepodge out here. This is like when you're ugly and you have a bad personality. <laughs> I think we need to go back to the office and look at the numbers and see what we can do because I'm a little scared. Work your magic, Lauren. You got this. I've got this. I've got this. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about how we're gonna modify the layout of this project. First of all, we're gonna open up the walls between the dining and the living rooms to make it an open concept feel. Next, we're gonna demolish the closet in the back bedroom and turn that into an ensuite primary bathroom with two sinks and a shower. Finally, we're gonna reconfigure the garage conversion. We're gonna raise the floor in there and then we're gonna reframe it to include a bathroom, a walk-in closet, and a walk-in pantry off of the kitchen as well as a laundry room. For those of you guys thinking about getting into flipping for yourselves, this is exactly why we have a course, House Flipping for Beginners, to walk you through everything you need to know A to Z to flip your first project. And one of the things that we're gonna teach you right out of the gate is not to get too far out over your skis. Don't bite off more than you can chew i.e. do an easier project first. This was a very advanced level flip. We'll teach you everything you need to know from finding the projects, financing the property, and executing it for a profit. So if you guys are ready to take the plunge into your own house flipping journey, click the link in the description to find out more. So demo's done, they've started framing. First things first, we had to get a new roof on this bad boy because it was leaking. We didn't want even more moisture getting into the house, causing water damage, but a lot of progress, let's go. So there's open concepts, and then there's open concepts. Yeah, most people just blow out the walls, but we want you to have some real depth and be able to, you know, sink, <laughs> sink down into the project. I love it from the kitchen, I can literally see every spot in this house. What do they say, people in glass houses th shouldn't throw <laughs> bricks? You don't even have glass here, you just, Watch your Okay, so we've reframed this space of the addition for a new master suite. We've got your laundry room right here. This is actually gonna be a pantry that opens up to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. We've got a big walk-in closet and your new master suite bathroom. So this is why I hate garage conversions because they're always poorly done. They usually involve a window unit just to get air conditioning. When you wanna do them right, you wanna make sure A, that the foundations are level so you're not stepping down and then you're actually running your HVAC. So as you can tell, we had to run all new ventilation in here so that you're tied into the main HVAC system for your whole house. 
That's what makes a conversion feel seamless, like it was meant to be part of the house all along. Unfortunately, we usually don't see that in DIY conversions. Yeah, we have to retrofit it. So if we do this and do this right, you won't be able to tell it's a garage. We'll be adding square footage, which adds value and money to the bottom line. So our guys have been hard at work here. We had to chip out of the foundation. All the plumbing on this house is cast iron. It's old, it's rotted out. We actually have to rip it out, chew through the foundation to replace it with PVC pipes. And at the same time, our engineer recommended that we put in these extra footings to support the weight of these overhead LVL beams so that we can really open up this space. I think it's a little bit overkill if you ask me, but you know, that's how the engineers are. They want these things sturdy AF. All right, so the chipping continues in the kitchen. We're gonna have a giant island. And I think once we remove that wall, we're just gonna have this huge open concept kitchen. I think it's gonna be great. Now this is the Han Solo kryptonite wall, but you know. All right, when this episode gets 100,000 likes, we'll free Lincoln from the carbonite block. Super excited to work on the design plan for the Big Regret House. And we got a lot of fun things in store. Because of the part of town that it's in, I think we can go a little bit funkier. So let's start with the exterior. I'm thinking we're gonna go bold. I think we're gonna do something dark and moody. So we're working with Benjamin Moore on this project. They are the sponsor of this video and they have some awesome paint. So I'm gonna go on their website and kind of explore some ideas around this. They've got this great area where you can search by color family. So I'm gonna go over here. We're gonna go dark and moody and bold. There was a color that caught my eye over here. So as you can see here, we've got all these different shades of black. There's a lot. I think this graphite is actually kind of nice. So let's go ahead and see it in a room. So we're talking about using this for the exterior. So they actually have some options. This kind of looks like our house a little bit. Okay, ooh, graphite, I don't know. Um, instead of doing this high contrast, I think I wanna go dark on this as well. Let's see, and there's a color called onyx. Here it is. Ooh, what do we think about this? Pretty awesome, right? Okay, I'm not loving those shutters. Maybe I can make those a different color. Let me do the shutters dark as well. What do we think, guys? Is this dark and bold? Are we loving it? I think I'm loving it. I'm not sure that Lincoln's gonna go for it, so I think what I'll do is I'll download their app and I'll take a picture of the actual house and show it to them in these colors, and then I think that will uh, do the trick, but I think this is gonna look awesome. For the rest of the house, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. We're gonna use white shaker style cabinets in both the kitchen and bathroom. We're gonna to top that with white quartz countertops, and then we're gonna run our favorite engineered hardwood floors throughout. It's paint day! Thanks to Benjamin Moore, they have a huge library of colors. We actually used their color app to select the colors that we wanted. The Color Portfolio app is super cool. Benjamin Moore has over 3,500 colors to choose from, more than any other paint company, and they're all available to try on via their app. Simply pick a color and then add it to one of their many inspiration photos or add it to your own photo. It's really helpful for inspiration and it helps you decide on a color. The quality of the Benjamin Moore paint is super high, which means we need less of it when we're using it. And less paint means more money in our pocket. It's covering really well. I'm super impressed. It's like it's a super rich texture too. So this house, we went with Benjamin Moore graphite on the brick of the house which is the lighter of the two colors, believe it or not. Right, and then for the siding and trim, we're gonna go with onyx, which is gonna be an even deeper, richer black color. We're using Benjamin Moore for the paint because it's such a statement piece of this. You wanna make sure that that paint is nice and thick, it's going on smooth and buttery, and it's true to the color tones. And I think with the colors that we selected, we've really set the tone for this house. So when the buyer walks in, they're gonna know they're in East Austin, they're in a funky patch, they're hip, they're cool, they're modern. What do you think, Flipsters? Did we make the right choice with this paint color? Comment below. Let's cue the paint montage. Man, what a difference it makes once you actually have drywall on the walls, right? It feels like an actual house. I know, right? And this no longer feels like a garage. It actually feels like a proper bedroom. You know, one of the things we did is we made it flush. We leveled it so that it's on the same level as the rest of the house. Makes a big difference so you're not stepping down into your converted garage. There's nothing worse than a bat on. Big day today because we got tile going in. I want to show you guys what we got going. So since we're over here in East Austin, I took liberty and got a little <laughs> funkier with the design choices. Got a little weird with it. Yeah, we're working with Lily Tile on this one. They were nice enough to send us this product. They have the most awesome handmade cement tiles in funky patterns. Go check them out. 
Link what do you think? Below. It's a little bolder than we normally do. Dude, know. that's really bold. Are you gonna go, are we going vertical or are we going horizontal? We're going vertical. Mm -hmm. Let's get vertical, vertical. Hold it up here so we can get a little, see so it like fits in so cozy like that. Oh, okay. dang. That's gonna be bold. That is funky. That is gonna be the focal point. Man, it's awesome looking. I think it's so great. It's gonna run to the ceiling. It's gonna be the first thing buyers see when they walk in the door. Bam, hit them with the style. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the tile for the bathroom. Yes, we've got this kind of an eight by eight square cement tile with these stripe patterns. So what I was thinking is we could lay them so they're alternating. Whoa, what? mind blown yet? What? You are getting very sleepy. <laughs> oh, hey, whoa, sorry. I was in a tile trance there. I think it's gonna look awesome. I can't wait to get it installed. Cue the time lapse. Okay, so a lot of changes since the last time we checked in here. We are getting cabinets in. Yeah, I think these are looking awesome. We've got the floors in, bit of a snafu. They shorted our order of floors, so we've, we've actually got some missing flooring up front. You can see how close we got, and then we just had to stop. I think we could just stop here. You think it could just yeah. be avant-garde cement flooring mixed with the wood? Modern. Love that idea. Yeah, we regretted it when we purchased it, and then the regret just got bigger and bigger as this project wore on. We had product delays, we had cabinets that were messed up. The list went on and on and on. Let's check out the bathroom. Okay, so you might remember this was a bathroom and a closet previously. We combined it to be a super long bathroom. So we've added a double vanity over here and then a super fun tile on the floor, some big format tile in the shower. It's like a long and narrow space, but I think it's gonna work. This is looking very dramatic before and after with the Benjamin Moore paint. What do you think? Awesome, I think the color selector was on point. Let's choose a stain for these posts. Now I'm kind of liking this orangey, high contrast look. What do you think? See, I like kind of more of this traditional brown tones. All right, massive controversy. What do you guys think? Follow us on Instagram so that you guys can vote on what we do with the stain color. Okay, looks like the results are in, and you guys already know, you went with my pick overwhelmingly. That's two to one Lauren got beat, and if you don't like that decision, that's why you gotta follow us at Austin Flipsters on Instagram, and you gotta vote on these things, people. This took us almost a year to complete this. I cannot believe it's taken us this long. And how many brain cells were lost on this project? Just a ton. It's finally here. We're ready for the big reveal. Are you ready? I am so ready. In three, two, one. Isn't this awesome? It's dark and moody, isn't it? So cool. I think it sets the tone and the vibe for the entire house. We went with Benjamin Moore graphite on the masonry and Benjamin Moore onyx on the siding. It's dark on dark, and you know what? It's working for me. This has got to be one of our more uh, dramatic before and afters just from a coat of paint. It looks so much different. Oh, it's going to make one hell of a thumbnail. Let me tell you that. Let's check out the inside of this bad boy. This place looks so different. Do you remember when we first bought it? Yeah, you had a big old wall sticking out right here, opened up the space so that it's now truly modern concept from your living all into your dining kitchen. So we're gonna address a lot of you guys' FAQs, and one of the most commons is about the furniture in the house. 
Why we put furniture in these houses if we're just gonna turn around and sell them? So this is staging. This is not gonna actually sell with the house. Does not come with. We're just using this to kind of give buyers a sense for how the furniture would fit in the space and how they might use it. So for example, one of the brands that we love working with is Article Furniture. They've kind of got like more clean, modern lines for their furniture. And you always want to try and match the staging to the house. So because we went bold and black on the exterior with the paint and the part of town we're in, you need something sort of modern because that's what your buyer's going to expect. I think the Article Furniture is perfect for that and you can just order it online and it comes super quickly and it's high quality, it's durable, and it looks super good in the space, yeah? Oh, I love it. We put links in the description to all the products and materials that we use in our projects for you guys to enjoy. So one way we like to add personality to a space is through big area rugs. It kind of helps define the area, adds a nice texture. This one from Article's got a cool geometric pattern to it and kind of a chunky weave. Yeah, and it kind of breaks up these floors, which are nice, it's like white oak that we love using, but it can kind of get monotonous. It's such a big space, the rugs are nice for that. Yeah, it helps define the space. Well, let's move on into the dining room because I love the way we set this up. It's a simple chandelier. It's a big space and it opens into your living. We stage it simply. This is like kind of that raw wood texture almost for the table. I love it. Yeah, white oak is super hot. We got it on the floors and we got it in the tables. I love that we have put in this nice door to the exterior with these side windows. Let's in a ton of natural light, which brings us to another question, which is where are the window treatments? It's kind of one of those things where people usually personalize their space with their own window treatments and it's not expected, so we don't offer it. And the other added benefit is it lets in a lot more light and the house shows better when you're showing it off in an open house or to potential buyers. The number one most frequently asked question we get is in the kitchen, and let's talk about it because this thing is a dramatic transformation. Isn't it awesome? Okay, so we went a little bold with our backsplash tile from Lily Tile. This is the Tiffany pattern, but I think it is awesome. It's bold, yeah. but I think it works because we went with a very neutral white cabinetry. We went with a neutral white quartz countertops. So we just, we need to give a little bit of funk. We're in Austin. Well, yeah, and if you pick a bold pattern like these Lily cement tiles, you really want to tone it down everywhere else or you're going to get overpowered quickly, yeah? Agreed. So usually in an island, you've got like a sink or a stove. This one is really just a prep space, but I think it's awesome. You've got this extra countertop seating so people can pull up to a bar stool or whatnot. You've got our little pendant lights that we've added. I think it's a great little space. The number one FAQ is what goes right here where I'm standing, the refrigerator. You guys, it's in the comments of every single one of our videos, where is the refrigerator? And the truth is that in Texas, we cure all our meats and we don't need refrigerators. <laughs> No, but for real, in our market, a fridge is not expected to sell with the home. A lot of people have their own, and when you sell your house, you take it with you. In the business that we say, it does not convey. Buyers expect the ovens and the dishwashers and the microwaves, so we put them in and we leave the fridge out. I don't know, it's quirky people, but it's not just us. One of the things I love to do in a kitchen to stage it for buyers coming through or for having an open house are these cute little cookies in a jar. Ooh, do you mind if I... Uh, I mean, help yourself. Look at this, look. They're real. These are real cookies, people. <laughs> Who knew? All you haters in the comments saying we fake our videos, you can eat it. So at the end of the day, staging is all about just helping the house feel like a home. And one of the things you guys ask about are having potential buyers through here for like an open house. That's why we'll have like little snacks and drinks or sometimes like a fragrance that makes it smell good. Some people even bake cookies like during an open house so that you've got that cookie waft coming through. Where do you think these cookies came from? You baked these? Oh yeah, good. You bake Oreos yeah, now? Yeah, I bake Oreos. It's total <laughs> Oreos, it's on Pinterest, look it up. Okay, so another pro tip for you guys hosting an open house is to waft a little bit of music through, you know, yeah. set the tone, the atmosphere. Set the tone. It's kind of like at a casino in Vegas, you know, they're wafting oxygen in there or whatever. You just need the smells and the sights and sounds. So what we use on open houses is this little Cove commuter speaker. So check this thing out. It's a little Bluetooth speaker. Let me hit, let me hit you guys with some tunes. Oh, this makes me want to buy a house already. Okay, but this one, the pro thing about this for an open house is boom, you can separate these. Whoa, mind you put, blown. You put one on the other side of the house, it creates that whole house atmosphere. So anyway, we talked them into giving you guys a coupon code 67% off on these things if you use the code Austin Flipsters. Shout out Cove Speakers. For real, we love these things for open houses. So let's go check out the rest of this open house, yeah? Let's do it. 
So starting on the other side of the house, we have all the spare bedrooms. Okay, so one of the main questions we also get is, why no furniture in the spare bedrooms? Well, so when you're paying for staging furniture, you're buying it per room. And so it's just kind of an added expense. And I mean, people get the idea, this is the bedroom. Okay, let's see the hall bathroom next. So I really love this bathroom. The flooring from Lily Tile on the floor, I feel like just adds such a fun element and to an otherwise very clean bathroom. I think it looks good. Yeah, and again, we added little staging touches. It's a nice little faux orchid. Wait, so you're saying your orchids are fake, but your cookies are real? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's orchids are fake. You're not a horticulturist. You're not actually cultivating these orchids for the staging? Keep your orchids fake and your cookies real. That's what my mom always said. All right, let's go see these other back bedrooms because there was some debate on the staging for this back primary bedroom. Okay, so down at the end of the hall here, if you turn left, you've got the second spare bedroom with access to the backyard off of it. And then over here, we have what was formerly the primary bedroom. It has its ensuite bathroom. And so we did kind of debate internally whether we should stage this as the primary or we're about to go see the primary in a second. Yeah, this was the smaller of the two bedrooms, which is why we staged the other one the way that we did. This house is unique because you do have two primary suites of a pretty decent size. Let's talk about this ensuite bathroom. Again with a funky tile, but in here you've got the double vanities, and I think it looks sharp. And we kept it very simple in both showers. We just had a big format white tile, we inlaid some hex tile on the floor and for the little niche, and I think it is awesome. Matte black hardware throughout. We've got these awesome mirrors that are, again, the matte black hardware. Okay, so let's go check out the other primary bedroom. All right, so to me, this is the most controversial space in the house because it's something that we usually don't like to mess with, which is a converted garage to get more square footage. Yeah, when we bought this thing, it was a terrible addition. Yeah, and I think we made the most of it, right? It's a big space. Look, we staged it with um, some article bedding and end tables, and it still doesn't fill up the space completely. No, this is huge. You could put an exterior entrance either here or here, and you can rent this out as just like a separate space because it's enough off of the main house, and it's got its own little bathroom over here. Okay, let's talk about this primary bathroom. This is a controversial thing because it's a bigger bedroom and it's a smaller bathroom. Except right? for the shower, this thing is enormous. This is like a car wash. It is big, but the vanity area is small because we had to fit a toilet and a vanity in here. And because it's a little bit smaller space, we didn't have a ton of room for overhead lighting, which is why we went with a lighted mirror from Haushin Home and it helps bring a little bit more light to kind of a smaller space. Super awesome for putting on makeup. Well, how does this thing even work? Look at that. Oh, Whoa, oh, oh, mood lighting. That's fancy. This is cool. Dude, link in description, people get you one. All right, so let's talk about the backyard on this thing real quick. Wow. This is quite the transformation. Do you remember what this used to just be like? <laughs> concrete for days. So we spent $8,000 demolishing the old concrete and then putting in this new decomposed granite. I think it looks sharp with the dark color and then we've got these big pavers. Yeah, it fits with the theme of the high contrast, the black and white. And I think it's a nice little gathering space in your backyard without having to spend tons and tons of money to add an outdoor kitchen or a big, huge deck off the back of this thing. But new buyer has that opportunity if they want it. All right guys, so I know this is a little bit of a different final tour, but we wanna take you guys along for the journey and give you kind of a behind the scenes on the business aspects of why we do what we do. And speaking of business, let's go talk about the numbers on this thing. We purchased the house for $334,000. Our all-in renovation and holding costs were $308,000 for a total investment in the property of $642,000. We've contracted to sell the property for $740,000. After $29,600 in closing costs, that would net us a total profit of $68,400. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Austin Flipsters to stay up to date on all our properties. The thing looks amazing before and after. Do I have regrets? Maybe a little. Would I have rather just watched a YouTube video about some people doing this instead of spending a year of my life doing it? Yeah. 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 But it looks great. All right, well, on to the next one. Hey, at least we turned a little bit of a profit on this one, yeah? Yeah, it, yeah, that way it's not a huge regret. It's just a big one. <laughs> Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you want more before and after house flip videos, and we'll see you on the next one. What's up, you guys? <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry. That might be the end of the episode. <laughs> okay. We just lost I all the just people that said that we were. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Dislike this video. <laughs> this video is. <laughs> <laughs> Leave hate, comment below. Peace. Peace out.